Hello there everyone, this is the own 5 minutes medicine and today we will talk about Guillain-Barre syndrome, a hypersensitivity reaction that damages our nerves and can be understood as a rare autoimmune disease in which immune system of the patient attacks peripheral nerves causing weakness and paralysis. Before jumping into anything, let's take a look at our autonomic nervous system which is a center to control our involuntary actions and can be broadly divided into two parts, the central and the peripheral nervous system, where the CNS comprises of brain and spinal cord, and the PNS comprises of nerves coming to and from the brain. One important point to remember is that GPS only attacks PNS, so in our discussion, we will be paying attention more towards it. Neuron forms a structural and functional unit of our nervous system and its primary function is to transfer information in the form of electrical signals and it contains of a cell body and dendrites, exon and myelin sheath and exon terminal. And the role of myelin sheath around exon is like an insulation around an electrical wire that prevents attenuation and increased conduction speed. So let's now look at the pathophysiology of GBS. When a person gets infected with pathogens, the immune system responds by making antibody against it. An everyday affair, isn't it? But what's special is in GBS, our immune system attacks the exon and myelin sheath as well. All of this happens because of similar antibody receptor site present on the pathogens and neuronal surface. So because of this, the immune system harms our own neurons along with the pathogens and this phenomenon of misinterpreting due to similar receptor site is known as molecular mimicry. Let's now understand it visually. So when we get infected, our immune system makes antibody against the pathogen. But sadly, they attack our own peripheral neuron as well resulting in degradation of exon and myelin sheath. All of this happens because of the phenomenon of molecular mimicry and which leads to delayed nerve conduction, muscle weakness and eventually to paralysis. Presentation of GBS is very peculiar as the symptoms appear in the patient in ascending manner and the symptoms may include numbness of limbs, weakness of muscles, back pain, dysphagia, and difficulty breathing. An easy way to remember the symptoms in GBS is by the mnemonic toes to nose as it signifies ascending manner of symptoms. And an important point to note is that deep tendon reflexes do decrease in GBS. And since GBS is an autoimmune disorder, it can be triggered by pathogens like Campylobacter jejuni, dengue virus, cytomegalus virus, etc. Primary diagnosis of GBS is based upon symptomatic analysis, physical examination, and history taking. For conformational diagnosis and differential diagnosis, electromyogram and CSF analysis can be done. The Brighton criteria is used for analyzing the severity of the patient and choosing the treatment regime which should be given. First-line treatment of GBS involves relieving the symptoms, so analgesics like opioids can be given. IV immunoglobulins and plasmapheresis can be given to suppress the overactive immune response. Low molecular weight heparin can be used for preventing pulmonary embolism, and supportive care can be given to the patients with respiratory failure and to improve the recovery. So that's it for a quick recap. If you liked the video and found it helpful, please help the channel to grow by liking, sharing and subscribing it. Thank you and see you until next time.